welcome back. Oh, I love this story. It's how the U.S. detergent washing up liquid industry accidentally exposed the secrets of the CIA's SR-71. I'm using Dawn dishwashing liquid. Dawn handles the grease in that water. And the cup came out great. Here's why. Half a cup of grease added to dishwater. Dawn breaks up grease, surrounds it, takes grease out of your way, helps keep it from settling back on your dishes. Dawn really handles grease beautifully. I'm not surprised. We've all heard of Kelly Johnson and the Skunk Works and the A12, Oxcart, SR-71, you name it. The stealth aircraft. And the idea was to fly very high, not be seen by Soviet radar and not be shot down like Gary Powers was by a surface to air missile. So let's build a fast, high flying and stealthy aircraft. So they did, and it's amazing. Faster than a speeding bullet, and unlike any other aircraft ever built, it raced the sun and won. Flying at speeds of 2,000 miles an hour, in the top 1% of the Earth's atmosphere, it holds every major speed and altitude record for a jet. It was designed for speed and height, but also stealth. Turbine compressor blades and the front of jet engines have a massive radar signature. Lockheed came up with this amazing design. First of all, they built these spikes. The spikes also move in and out, and that was to make a shock wave to slow down the supersonic air, because jet engines don't actually like very fast air. But they also were for stealth. In this declassified document, you can see some of the ideas that they used on the SR-71 or A-12. One of them is the reason it was called the Blackbird, and that was because of radar absorbing paint. But it also had this very revealing nickname. It was called the Iron Ball Paint, and that is exactly what it is. So many times we hear about alien technology and stealth and Area 51, but the truth is that radar absorbing paint didn't come from the skin of a spaceship. It came from an American paint manufacturer who put these iron balls in the paint. And it's just really simple, but brilliant. A lot of radar technology uses microwaves, and microwaves are roughly one millimeter in wavelength. If you can physically make some skin on your plane, which absorbs one millimeter of radar energy, you can mask your plane. Hey, so let's just put iron balls in a black sticky paint and paint it all over our spy plane. That'll work. It does. We're just talking about early stealth. More complicated modern stealth is all about very complicated shapes uh, that don't reflect radar. But back in the day, the Blackbird paint, the nacelle engine inlets, and some faceted shapes all work pretty well. But that still left them with a big problem at the back. The two massive engines, each one more powerful than a cruise liner. I remember that on my Airbrix model. <laughs> the two massive engines make this enormous heat signature when they're going at Mach 3. If only there was a way to hide that exhaust plume. Well, maybe there always has been. And that is turn it into a plasma. We've talked about plasma stealth technology before as a cloaking device. But in fact, the easiest thing you can do is turn your exhaust plume into a plasma because plasmas can't be seen so well on radar. So how do you do that? Well, it turns out that you inject a cesium metal into your jet fuel, and when it burns, it melts into a plasma and makes the jet exhaust more stealthy. So the engine manufacturers and the fuel designers and some smart scientists came up with a product which its code name is A50. And now I really hope that I'm not giving away too many secrets, but 
A50 additive is a cesium based additive to jet fuel JPL, whatever it's called, JP7A1, as I would call it, as a private pilot, a kerosene based fuel uh, to make your exhaust stealthy. And so they used it. But then they ran out. They ran out for this amazingly counterintuitive problem. Watch this. Like most parents, I try to keep my family safe, but now I find out my bathroom is a minefield of toxins? What are we supposed to do? If at the factory you pour toxic chemicals into a product, like baby shampoo, you're gonna wind up with toxic baby shampoo and toxics in workers, communities, and duh, babies. In the 1970s, the environmental movement looked carefully at reducing carcinogenic materials in household stuff. And they found that washing up liquid detergent had cesium in it, which is a problem for humans. So after a lot of lobbying, the cesium content of detergent was reduced and it's made it all safer for our soft hands and washing up. But it turns out that the cesium for A50, which is the stealth additive for the SR71, came from the US detergent industry and they were stopping making it. Now, a bit of disclosure. I mean, a lot of the things I say seem like, where does he get this information? It's all out there. So I'm assuming, please tell me if I'm doing something wrong. It took simple research to find this. The detergent industry announced that because of their low cesium washing up liquid, that there was now a supply problem to the A50 SR71 CIA stealth program. Duh. I love it. It reminds me of my H&R Block story where Jackie gave me a lookup table from the IRS, which was <laughs> CIA bases in Europe so she could apply the right tax bracket for me <laughs> and I'm not in the CIA. <laughs> and then this came out. Of course, SR-71s need refueling in the air by tanker aircraft, the K-135 series. Watch this. So K-135s are tanker aircraft, they have fuel, mainly just this JP-7, whatever it's called, for fighter aircraft. But they also had to have the A-50 additive for when they were refueling the SR-71s. You can imagine rendezvousing a tanker aircraft with a um, any aircraft. There's a chance that you might be delayed. So the tanker aircraft always has the problem of running out of fuel. Well, not really, because it is a flying fuel tank, so it can always divert fuel from its tanks for refueling to its own engines and get back to base, but not using a 50 additive. So in the second reveal, the K-135 tanker fleet issued this memo saying, hey, tanker drivers never use the A50 <laughs> additive to get yourself home and use it in the K135 engine because it'll destroy your engines. The cesium tends to bind, I believe, onto the turbine blades and you have to tear the engines down. I'm sure they could use it in a push, but it was bad and they issued a memo. So that's how things come out. The detergent industry announced that they're no longer making cesium for the SR-71 and K-135 tanker drivers had a note, a post-it note on their flight deck saying, don't use the A-50, it's bad for your engines. <laughs> I guess the truth is out there.